Hello, lovely ladies in the Goddess Creations for Women group and beyond, because of course this video is going to be posted on social media for everybody to enjoy. I am Shamnali Gray from Goddess Creations, and I am hosting the 23rd video in the Goddess Creations Empowerment Marathon. Today, I am interviewing the lovely Heather Garbett, who is going to be speaking on healthy relationships. Heather Garbett is a world-renowned psychotherapist and coach specializing in love and relationships. Heather Garbett brings swift and effective change to people struggling in their romantic life. Her hybrid model, blending coaching, psychotherapy, visioning, and inner child work provides deep and permanent results for her clients. Now, she shines a light on the challenges and solutions to healthy relating, how to heal the past hurt and give powerful tools to transform unhelpful thoughts, emotions and behaviors into rich and a rich and happy love life. Heather is on a mission and has created an evolutionary wave of change in love relationships worldwide throughout her celebrated movement with the goal of empowering 10 million women to create true, loving, mutually supportive relationships. She will be sharing with us today on how you can or how we can change the patterns of our lives to enrich the relationships we truly desire. So let me bring on Heather Garbett. Hello, Heather. Thank you for joining us here today. Hello, Shamna. It's lovely to be here. And thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Well, Heather, we are speaking today on healthy relationships. What is a healthy relationship? It's a good question. It's one where there's love, obviously, affection, cooperation, communication, plenty of time to talk and enjoy each other's company. Be okay apart, you know, be able to do your separate things that really nourish you individually, to give and receive, to accept each other's quirkiness, mm -hmm. learning to live with those, oh, you know, the, the perpetual problems we have, one person's tidy, one person isn't and negotiate conflict really well. I would say that's the top few. So how would we know whether we aren't in a healthy relationship? Just to just to just get those things out there. Yeah, I think you'll know it from the tone, how you feel in your body. You're likely to feel tense. Probably that your partner is not really your friend, that there isn't an emotional connection. You don't feel like you belong. You don't talk. The warmth is gone. There might not be sexual passion anymore. Distance that's gone beyond just, you know, time apart. It's got dissociation in it. Well, before we go any further, because I'm immediately bumbling with all of these questions that I want to ask you, I would like to ask you one thing, though, Heather. How did you come up to be the expert of healthy relationships? Well, tell us a bit about your journey therein. So that we can connect with you as a person. And by the way, lovely ladies, if you are watching live, thank you very much for watching live. And do hashtag live in the comments. And if you are watching in the replay, thank you very much. And you can do a hashtag replay. We would love to see your questions and comments so that we can connect with you during the interview. So yes, Heather, how did we get onto how did you get onto this part of your journey? I've had uh, a, a sequence of relationships during my life the sort of uh, long-term monogamous relationships, but none of them have been really happy. I divorced in 2013, and by 2016, I was online dating. I had lots of adventures, and that was really interesting. But I wasn't having satisfying relationships. And even though I've been a psychotherapist for 35 years, I, I hadn't cracked that code. And then on Valentine's Day 2016, um, email fell into my inbox that said, do you want to create a miracle in your love life? I thought, I damn well do, absolutely do. And it was from Catherine Woodward Thomas, who was doing a Calling in the One coaching program. And so I went and did that and then trained to be a coach and then did her other program as well, Conscious Uncoupling. Um, I found true love in my partner, Ian. It's just really sweet. Um, so I think, yeah, 
all of those all of those qualities and experiences have brought me to this place so would you then say that universe landed this part oh, in your lap through yeah. an email yeah it was a gift and you yeah. recognized it for what it is and uh, to yeah. change your own personal life let's say you were at that moment in in your own personal um struggles yeah i was ready for change i was restless for change hungry for change hmm. and how may i just ask how long ago in in uh in years this was so that and not that i'm questioning of course your credibility i'm just wondering how long ago was this part of this change in life so that for us, when we are in this personal situation, we know roughly when we can expect the universe to help us out. To help us. I think when you know you're ready, the universe will stretch out its hand and just give you a pull. Yeah, right. it will. Yeah. Um, this was 2016, February 2016. I've been growing and changing exponentially ever since. Mm. I think my grounding in psychotherapy has really helped because my self-awareness is quite high. Yeah, uh, and but the coaching has taken me into a, a whole other league. So, I would like to know, Heather, how, what did then the which is is there a difference, large difference between the conscious uncoupling and the calling in the in the one? Because you mentioned both already. Uh, yeah. What is the difference between the two, and how do you use this in helping others um, to? create the healthy relationship that we actually all do desire. I mean, what are the key points therein? Okay. So in conscious uncoupling, I'm helping people to separate well. If their relationship has really run its course and they want to end well, so they don't just repeat the patterns in the next relationship or just do the opposite or end up feeling so stung that they never want to have a relationship again, feel so crushed. Sometimes people feel really crushed and can't bear it to have another relationship again. So I help people really come through that and treat it as a, a point of growth. Really look at what went wrong, what their part was in that so that they can change that part of themselves that was mm. in unhelpful patterns that created the distancing or whatever else it was that went wrong. So what are the things that can go? I, I know we don't want to focus too much on the the unhappy side of relationships, but it, it does help to keep, you know, to get a view of what are then the things that we might encounter in our personal relationships that will actually be a signal that conscious uncoupling is needed? Because we, you know, especially women, we, um, we want to hold on. We don't want to feel like we have lost, let's say. Mm. We want to be nurtured. We always want to keep that spark of hope. Yes, How do we do. know when it is time for us to let go? It's a very good question. And I think it's one every woman has to decide for herself. But I think there is a point where you you know you've gone to a point of no return. You know, you know there's just a, a sort of critical mass, no further, enough. This is wrong. I can't do this anymore. I can't put any more energy into this. I and think that would then, be it. And what go would on. then be the early signs of the relationship not being healthy well i think those the things we were saying before about there being little communication you know the early signs they can they can be repaired they can be evolved from if you catch it early and ways that you can do that if you don't mind me digressing slightly here to go into that perfect to make sure that it doesn't happen are make sure you look after yourself and do the things that nourish you if you keep giving, and it's a really strong womanly trait, if you keep giving, there's nobody going to be left there to love because you'll have sacrificed so much of yourself. And the person that you were lovable for, you know, the one they fell in love with is no longer there. You become a drudge or a co-parent and there's no relationship to be had. Now, in addition to that, you need to talk. If you don't talk, and I don't mean in a recriminatory way. I mean in an appreciative way. If you, if you talk with gratitude and appreciation, your husband's or partner's heart will be warmed. I had, had a conversation with a lovely woman recently whose husband is in business. And he's quite a high flyer, big deals, you know, money going around. 
at quite a high level. And he's quite preoccupied with that, self-employed. And she's being really fed up because she's not getting any attention. And, and I said to her, well, why don't you just try something? Why don't you just try saying, darling, how can I support you in your business? And Ooh. his whole face lit up. It, it, I mean, it, it turns things around. His whole face lit up. And he, he gave her some answers. And then she said, do you think, you know, when this deal's done, we could just have a couple of days off together? And he really put his heart and soul into those two days. He made them. They did all the things that he knows she loves. And it was just from that question, reaching out to actually feel into his world. Just from that question. So she didn't even have to do anything in his work. No, she didn't. No, because he, he actually he didn't in that moment need her to do anything. He just needed her to want to acknowledge. To, yeah, to really feel where he was at. And that's quite often the way with men, you know, they need to be respected. They need to be valued just like we do. They're not just badly behaved women. They, they are wired differently. Mm. They're the protector providers. I know it's cliche and it, it's largely true still. Particularly if you've got children, you know, the, the woman's role is much more strongly geared up to taking care of the children. That's where her heart is. That's where her whole wiring is towards nurture. And his is to protect, protect and provide. And for that, he needs respect and appreciation and support and passion. And passion. And, 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 and yet, nowadays, the roles, I mean, you, you were also talking yeah, about talking, yeah. right? You got, that's it. I mean, because you were talking about the talking. And, but talking is usually seen as a woman's thing. Am I correct in that? Yeah, and it doesn't always have to be the, – the, there's some interesting stuff going on because the way that you talk can really be very powerful. Um, there's a, a guy called Brian Reeves who works really well for men particularly um, because he's a, an ex-army captain and now a, a coach, and so he can really speak from that masculine role. You know, you say that the roles are, are changing. And, and, you know, it's, a, it's a cliche that the, the women are connecting and the men aren't. But, you know, these days, a lot of women are out there being the hunters and the exactly. men are, yeah. So if we, if we rather than think man and woman, we think masculine and feminine that largely falls into man and woman, we'll, we'll get further in the conversation. But what I was going to say is if, if you are of um, a masculine bent, that, that means direction, um, then it would be that you would look for freedom and autonomy in your life. So if you're trying to communicate with somebody whose whole thing is freedom and autonomy, you don't criticize them for that. You support them with that. And you use language that is opening rather than, I want you to stop doing that and give me some attention. You never, you always, you know, which is never going to get anybody anywhere. Um, you actually reach out and say, it's really lovely, darling, that you're doing all of this. And then you'll get the communication. Wow. You know, so, so long as things haven't gone so far that they think you're being sarcastic you know yeah. if, if you're in a bitter and twisted place doing that might not work but actually you can say things even from there do you know i know we've got estranged i know we've got distant but there are some things that i really want you to know that i appreciate about you mm. actually you're saying that it's necessary to be grateful for who they are and what they do yeah yeah well I, you, yeah well, keep talking <laughs> and if you learn their love language, now I wrote these down because I always forget one. There are five love languages, primarily. Physical affection, quality time spent together, acts of service, gifts, kind words, and time spent apart in solitude. That's the sixth one that's just recently been discovered. If you learn what he loves, if he feels loved by you buying him a gift, if he feels loved by you ironing his shirts particularly well, I mean, I know that's a cliche, but that, that's something that my partner would love. You know, if I was um, to be more domestic and do those things, he would really relish that. Um, everybody, just about everybody likes words of appreciation. But for, for women, quite often, that's really strong. You can tell your man. You know, what I'd really like is if you would just to tell me at the end of every day when we're in bed together, things that you've liked about me today, even if it's just three. <sighs> 
and I can tell you three things I've liked about you. And even if it's, darling, you picked up the towels off the bathroom floor. That's so lovely. You really heard me. And I, I really appreciate that. And you say that, you hold your hand to his face, you know. And is that one of the, can you just repeat those again, the, the, the love language? Just, just, yeah. Yeah. yeah slow. So, just, I'll go slower. Is that one of those that you just mentioned? That's a word of affection. That's words okay. of affection. So gratitude and words of affection, I think, go together. You know, it's appreciation, tenderness, kindness, you know. It could be, uh, oh, darling, you're just looking so lovely. You know, thank you so much for driving tonight. You know, I felt so safe mm. and just I could relax and just have a, a little bit of snooze on the way back. And thank you for not playing the music loud so I could do that. Yeah. And what if, because you were talking about the, I think, did think, I think you said masculine energy of in that relationship and that it usually is the male that has that. What if you have a relationship where the woman is the one that is going for the achievement and the freedom and that in the relationship, actually the acquiring yeah. and the male is for in the dom dom domestic energy. How would you, would you then do this the other way around or is or are you, are you even saying flip the coin go back to the classic version because that's natural um i think you probably have a dance um sometimes i still think we've got the hard wiring mm. the the adjustment for us is when we come out of the workplace to come back into our feminine selves because it it, it is um i mean I, i've got a really strong feminine side and I've got a really strong masculine side. You know, I'm quite ambitious, I'm aspirational, but my feminine side is in connecting with people. I really love connecting. Yeah. Um, so if, if I want to do something, if I really want to do something and somebody else, it doesn't have to be my partner, but just sort of blocks that, then I feel frustrated and I'm more likely to be angry. Um, and that's a more sort of aggressive, uh, acceptable masculine response um, and I think in those situations if the other person goes into a more feminine accepting way then there is a much better way to to cooperate and connect and develop if you get to be two heads to heads no you're blocking my freedom no you're blocking mine whoa somebody's got to be feminine somewhere for it somewhere work. yes yeah. and actually um it is then that dance in those, in that, mm. the dance yeah. between sometimes yeah. you are the masculine, sometimes you are the feminine, because it all yeah. is in us. And yeah. maybe, um, hmm, maybe it could also be that, so I would like to ask you, why are, why is the healthy relationship such an, in, why is this a subject in itself? Is there um, a reduction in healthy relationships that we need to refine? Yeah, well, I yeah, I did uh, some research. Uh, thousands, something like 250,000 people get married in the UK every year and 100,000 get divorced. And um, Relate said, I think, at any one time, it's not that they, they have everybody, 20% of the population in their uh, therapies, but 20% of marriages at any one time are in distress. Now, and that's really quite quite a proportion and I think we don't have the skills you know we don't have skills to be parents we never taught those we never taught skills to have relationships we just think we should be able to do it and it, it's a massive skill communication and understanding empathy action mm. you know everybody's different needs to be juggled with you know it's massive right so what would then be the things that we could do or um, you said you you mentioned part of it though. You said something about you know learn about. Um, tell me what did you, what are then the key things that we can do to let's just say attract the right relationship? Because if we have come from a scarred scarred situation and um, and we have learned and we have followed the steps in the healing, let's say of that. I think yeah. we mentioned that. Yeah. Then we come to the point where you want to find the right relationship. Yeah. Is that one of the things that you focus on? Yeah. Um, you go through the steps in conscious uncoupling. If we, if we finish that bit off first, you go through the steps and you really look at where your patterns developed. So you may have a pattern of self-sacrifice in relationships. 
Um, you may have a pattern of not letting people get close. You may not feel safe. It's, it's all the, the, the big ones, you know, might feel I don't really belong. I'm not good enough. I'm not wanted. I'm not chosen. I'm not important. And you may have all sorts of concomitant behaviors that go with that. So self-sacrifice is a classic one of not feeling good enough that you have to people please. Absolutely. Yeah. Very recognizable. Very recognizable. Well, yeah, and that's sort of historic in women as well. You know, we, we had to please to be protected and provided for back in the caveman days. Yeah. So uh, you need to do that piece of work on yourself. Otherwise, things won't change. And there are many ways to do it. The one that worked best for me was actually doing the coaching with a coach because it went deeper. And, th and that's why I, I went to do it, because I found such value in it. And also I can work with people in, because of my two things, the psychotherapy and coaching. I can work at a really deep level, which I love because I've got all the new skills that come from the coaching and all the new, de the old depth that comes from understanding emotional patterning you know, from my psychotherapy. So we work through that. And then you have a time where you clear the air. It, this is conscious uncoupling. You clear the air with your partner. Now, if it's so toxic that you're not speaking to each other, we'll do that in an um, as-if way. Um, all the way you through. You give us tips to, do, uh, to, to clear the air. I mean, I'm not telling you to give away your program. I'm just saying, just for the viewers, what are the things that we can do um, to know or that we can look for to know what well, we've, we've, you've mentioned one of the things that we would recognize that we may need to consciously uncouple but what depending are, yeah. yes De depending on whether your partner is trustworthy and you feel safe with them because you mm. know it might, depending how toxic things became yeah. yeah apologizing for your role is the big thing so apologizing for self-sacrificing to the degree that you were no longer there apologizing for working so hard that you ignored their needs, apologizing for concentrating on the children and not accepting and caring for their needs, for not respecting them, for not valuing them, Wh whatever it might be. You, you'll know what your role is on some level. You know yeah. what you're doing. Or when you go through the steps, you discover that really well. And then so you apologize for that and you ask for forgiveness and you can say, you know, is there anything that you would like to apologize to me about? Now, if they've, they've done the, the conscious uncoupling in parallel with another coach, we don't work together in one couple with one coach, then that conversation can be even more fruitful because they've done their own work and they can see where it all comes from. And they can say, you know, I really see how this has happened. I'm really sorry we got to this point. You know, and this yeah, is what I actually, did. Even if your partner does not want to come with you to that coaching, would that then be a signal that that isn't that you're actually in that unhealthy relationship because the partner doesn't even want to go with you? I'm just asking because maybe some women have that situation as well. Well, uh, yeah, and uh, a lot of people, let alone men, feel that dwelling on feelings, as it's called, is unhealthy or weak, and so they don't want to do it. And probably, you know, that's that's been from that early self stuff you know the sense you make when you're little it's not appropriate to talk about feelings you know stiff up a lip in the UK I don't know what you have in the Netherlands that is similar but you know we don't speak about feelings nobody's interested so we cultivate a sense of disinterest in ourselves and then that creates a sense of shame if yeah. we have feelings and shame is a real blocker to any sort of exposure like in coaching or psychotherapy. Or someone shames you. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That's is, one uh, of the most destructive things, actually, is shaming. And is that then a signal? I mean, you feel it. And as women, we do tend to stomach it a little too long. Yeah. When we are in that state of that feeling shamed, is there a possibility from that state to rekindle, to make it a healthy relationship? Or is it, that's what I'm trying to say, is it, or is it that you say, by the, in the end, lovely lady, when you have worked on yourself, you will realize that this relationship doesn't serve you. Indeed, that could go that way. Um, if, if the people involved, if the couple involved have each done some work, it may not be in the same way. Mm. Qu quite often when one of them has done conscious uncoupling, the communication is raised to such a degree that they can recouple. I've worked with 
other coaches in parallel with people and the communication has improved so much and they actually did rediscover the love that they had for each other and then they've got all sorts of skills that they've learned through the coaching to how to have a good relationship how to be kind you know how to listen how to accept how not to take things personally how not to be defensive and to know yourself so much better that you know what your needs are so actually what's the beautiful thing is what you're saying is that conscious uncoupling is not necessarily uncoupling it's more the focus on conscious yeah so that you can know yeah whether to yeah. or not uncouple so yes well sometimes it's evident at the beginning but you start off in the the whole process with an intention of having a good healthy relationship with your maybe x maybe not x going forward so that is the goal you can't start conscious uncoupling think, coupling thinking we're going to get back together because that's counter to the whole process. It oh. may be the upshot of it, but it's not the, the aim of it. You okay. I must say a, a very human part of me would say, why would we go through conscious un uncoupling together if we're not aiming to come back together? then we are already energetically separate. So why would we go through that process together? Why would it not be just the one? You, you go through it in parallel, one with one coach and one with another. And those coaches do not discuss, but the couple can. So from that point of view, they're both learning about themselves and their own role in things and learning new skills in relationship. The relationship itself may be dead. Mm. You know, sometimes things have just gone too far but particularly if you have children you know the way forwards you want it to be a cooperative Healthy. relationship where they're not co um, com in competition with each other for the kids love you know they hold the the children as the paramount importance and they're still co-parenting in the most constructive way for the child right. and sorting out finance as well you know because when when we when we start to separate we go right back to our sort of core woundings like i don't belong i'm not wanted and we we then also go back to the core behaviors yeah we go back to the core behaviors which is like nursery school behaviors well you've got that but i want it no yeah. i want it you know and if that becomes a child or a house you know you can spend a whole lot of money and pain going through lawyers fighting over fine details right. it's so painful so if you're both doing that the chances are you'll spend your money which is a lot less than the lawyers on two coaching programs and you'll come out with something that will make a lasting change for the rest of your life to the relationship with the father of your children and that sounds amazing because we are now saying that you, after you've gone through that process, you are now have, setting the foundations to actually have a healthy relationship. What yeah. are the signals? What are the signs? You've mentioned a few, but I'm just wondering, uh, how, now that you've done this, um, what would then be the, um, how would we then attract, not to say an, a, a, new, uh, a new person, but what are the steps that we need to do to, stay in connection with that healthy relationship with ourselves i would say to be able to have a healthy relationship after we've done that what are the things that we may look out for so if i'm understanding you right you've come to the end of a long relationship you've got children Suppose. let's just use that as an example so and you're now friends with your ex and you're cooperating with your children and you naturally would want to have another partner in your life so some of the work would have been done in the conscious uncoupling to really help you know yourself and your needs and to learn new skills about having relationships. Yes. So you can do, on the basis of that, calling in the one, and that will really help you create a vision. Like you had an intention for what you wanted at the end of conscious uncoupling. At the end of calling in the one, you have a, a really strong vision and set an intention for the relationship that you want to attract and be in. And then you do some quite profound work, which is a lot of letting go of the past in different ways, but you do some profound work which shifts your identity. 
Well, that is very important, the letting go of the past and also yeah. the shifting of your identity. So that means that you are yeah. now having a new way of looking at yourself. Yes, yes. So, so for me, you, if, I, yes. yeah? if, if, I, if I give you an example. A few tips I, for us uh, of that, uh, to do that. Suppose the lovely ladies are watching this and they're like, right, so how would I now take on that phase of things so how would i now you know revolutionize revolutionize my love life what tips can i okay. do concerning that okay so quite apart from whether you do a coaching program or not exactly i would get the book calling in the one and do all the exercises in it don't just read it you have to do the writing and the meditations as well and i would go from there and really start to think what it is you want you know i'm shutting my eyes because i'm visualizing so for me, it would be the man that I want in my life will meet me on every level, emotionally, practically, levels of respect. We'll enjoy the same things. He has a quality of heart and devotion and capacity to be tender as well as vigorous and lively. For me, he must love dogs. <coughs> Excuse me. Unlike the outdoors. Um, share uh, taking pleasure in food and wine. Um, anyway, that, that gives you an example. So I'm just going to have to drink of water. For everybody, it may be different, but I think there are some cornerstones. So that's what you visualize. And I would, <coughs> excuse me. Hmm. Well, I must say, I was already in your vision with you right there. So <laughs> I know that, that, I, that I love I, vision. I, to say, I don't want the dogs. <laughs> I had to tell myself, no, you don't have the dogs. You don't have the dogs. I don't have the dogs. But I can feel it. Sorry, yeah. But I could feel it because um, it is that visioning. Mm. Um, it's almost like the law of attraction, I would say. Oh, when it, you absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Both of the these programs, both of these programs are uh, entwined with the law of in, attraction. Yeah. Um, and it's really powerful. It's really powerful. So when you when you make your vision, I'd write it down and then record it. Don't think of any one person in particular, but record it on your phone. There'll, there'll be a, some sort of voice memo thing or whatever. You'll find one. Um, and then play it to yourself as you're going to sleep. You know, um, feed your dream. Feed your vision. Listen. And then just let it go and see what comes. You do the bits of work to what gets in the way. I think, I mean, in some ways I would say this because I'm a coach and I love working with people, but I think it's better if you do do it with somebody else because you can't easily think outside of your own box. So you'll always be, as Einstein says, you can't solve the problem with the same thinking that got you into it in the first place, something yeah. like if that. You don't That's change just, anything, nothing will, yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that. So, and I think that's really, really true. You need to have a different way of thinking and somebody else can help you think outside of your books. And what you are saying, Heather, is, at least that's what I'm hearing, is that, um, yes, take a coach if, pos if possible. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to ask you, where can we, we find you in a moment? Um, so, but if uh, we are not able to reach you directly, you know, um, then you are also saying get these two books: the unconscious coupling and no, 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 conscious, no, conscious uncoupling. uncoupling. Do forgive me. See, oh wow, <laughs> that's conscious. what we do the most of the time: is unconscious coupling. We just I jump know. in and don't notice. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. The two books that we need to get are conscious uncoupling and yeah. calling in the one, and they are both by the same author, Catherine Woodward Thomas. It's Catherine, Catherine with a K. Okay. Um, well, we'll have to see how to write that. Yeah. But never mind. I've already put the titles up, so that must be very Googleable. <laughs> yeah, they're dead easy. I think they're both on Amazon. And, and these are get... workbooks, let's say. These are books. They're the workbooks that go alongside. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. So you have done gone through this process yourself and had a coach to support you in that process. And you are saying that this is actually very advisable, yes. is that if we want to attract healthy relationships in our lives, if you want to get rid of the patterns of the past and reset ourselves to be able to have amazing love situations in the future, mm. we want to uh, go through this process 
and contact you as well as you, as you are also a practitioner of these exercises mm -hmm. among other yeah. things yeah yeah among other things so where heather can we find you i'm on heathergarbutt.com and my email address is there and my phone number is there i usually offer a half hour conversation to see if it's the right program for you so and that's free so you can ring and talk to me and see you know and, and if it isn't right for you i'll direct you to what might be more appropriate um but hopefully it will be right for you and i can do some really good work with you wow so that's where we will be able to find you everywhere on social media yeah mm -hmm. heather garbutt love and relationship coach on social media um you'll see on my facebook page i will put other things too uh, like recently um it, we're in the coronavirus so it's hand sanitizer recipes you know <laughs> but yeah. generally it's for the good of humankind you know wow so is there are there any more tips that you would like to give us as we are rounding up to uh, attract our happily ever after to really learn how to take care of yourself i think find out about the feelings and needs foundation for love meditation and that's where you go inside and really listen to yourself about what you feel and what you need there's a website called the Center for Nonviolent Communication, which has lists of feelings and needs, which in a way just validates what they are. Because we quite often feel ashamed of a need or a feeling. And we don't need that. We just mm. actually need to value everything that we're feeling and needing because it's telling us something about our path in this life, about what nourishes us, about what we truly want. And that's key. We're here for a purpose. We need to find out what it is and live it. And live it. And absolutely live it. And enjoy ourselves. <laughs> wow. Thank you. So thank you very much, Heather, for sharing. I know this was just a tip of the iceberg of all that you can share. But for, I, will, I must say we have done our best to get this across. Thank you for sharing on how to recognize healthy relationships how to recognize unhealthy relationships um and you know and also what tools what steps we can take in actually transforming changing maybe you know like how to rekindle that flame is, is the compassion for yourself and the compassion for the others the listening and also the um learning the love language of the other these are huge things that really your ego has to get out of the way for you to be able to do that absolutely um, yeah so yeah. but it you. will get out of the way if you look after yourself if you look if, after yourself yeah if you're looking for somebody else to look after you in ways you don't look after you it won't work it won't work mm. thank you very much heather for this lovely conversation thank you lovely viewers for watching and uh, and for staying and and could i just do one more thing i know Absolutely. we're over time i want to put up one of my wishes you know yes so do you just put your hand on your heart anybody that is listening to this my sincerest wish for you is that you find wholesome happy delightful love in your life it's fulfilling deep and brings you great joy thank you thank you thank you that was amazing thank you heather you're very welcome let's do that i can feel my hair and my my scalp just going ding, 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 bringing it in bringing it in absolutely let's do it let's do that thank you very much for sharing thank um, you we will meet each other again, lovely ladies, on the next interview. And for now, I wish you a lovely day. And my whole voice has changed <laughs> <laughs> by this little bit of magic at the end by Heather. Thank you, Heather Garbutt, for sharing. And I will see you again. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>